The combination square is a tool with many features. There's a ruler, there's a body, which allows you to create 90 degree angles. There's another side of the body that allows you to create 45 degree angles. The body can be moved along the ruler by loosening a knob, just a quarter turn, then sliding it up and down, and then tightening the knob. Very frequently, students will, by accident, take the ruler out of the body. You'll notice on the ruler, there's a groove. Also, if you hold the body up to a light, you'll see that there's a tooth sticking out in the middle. To reassemble, you need to line up the groove with the tooth. To do that, you can wiggle it back and forth until it re-engages. And then tighten the knob. The combination square also has a level, which can be useful for projects. And there's a feature you may want to remove, which is a, what's known as a scratch all, A-W-L. The scratch all can be helpful with more advanced woodworkers to create lines. You can use it instead of a pencil. However, it is also a sharp nail. You can feel free to take it out and put it elsewhere in your toolkit. To teach woodworkers how to use the combination square, I go through the following steps. First, I tell them, take the hand you write with and put it in your pocket. Take your other hand and try and hold up the combination square so that your thumb goes in the curve, your forefinger is on the ruler, and your other three fingers can wave. If you can do this, when you set it down in the wood, you'll be able to take your fingers and pull the combination square against the wood. One way to practice is on the edge of the table and slide it up against the table. You can see my three fingers are on the table, my thumb is pulling it against the table, and my forefinger is holding it flat against the table. I like to do this with the table before the wood because many woodworkers get confused and they put the combination square on top of the wood and they don't realize the body needs to go next to the wood. So by doing it on the table, you can prove that point. Then you can move on to them putting it next to the wood, holding it flat, and starting to draw lines. And the exercise we do to help understand this, we call Jenga blocks. It's really a sawing practice, but it helps them understand what it's like to also draw parallel lines. So you have them draw a line, if they're a righty, they start on the right end, and then they move leftwards. And you could have them draw lines that are an inch apart or narrower, it doesn't really matter. You could have them practice estimating by making the lines roughly equally spaced. It's very important to help your woodworkers understand that they want to drag the pencil. The reason is that if you push the pencil, you might also change your line. Now, if you're a lefty, same goes in reverse. Start your lines on the left and work backwards. If you want to make Jenga blocks that are one inch apart, you could start somewhere near the middle, make a line, then move the combination square forward until the back is on the line you just drew and make a second line. Conveniently, the width of the ruler is one inch. Another way to use the combination square is to estimate the middle of a board. You can take it, give yourself some space, and find two whole numbers. For example, the two and the eight. Halfway between two and eight, Halfway between two and eight is five. Make a little mark at the five, and that's the middle of the board. To make 45 degree lines, you hold the combination square the same way, but use the other end of the body and make your lines.